that is all I wanted to say about Albania. That really is about the first half of what I wanted to say, but I don't think I'll say all of the second half. You'll be sleepy by the time I finish. Perhaps if I just tell you, rather than tell you lots of personal experiences, if I just tell you how God called me into the, into the Albanian work and leave it there. It goes back to 1965, and I went to Stuttgart. Well, not actually Stuttgart, in fact, back now, but it's near Stuttgart in Germany. The intention was to improve my German, and I got a job as a postman. And I'd been converted two or three years before, and I went to the local Methodist church in Bucknang. I was converted in the Methodist church in Basingstoke. And there, amongst the Methodists, I met elderly people who were on visits from the eastern zone of Germany. And because they were old, they were allowed out, no matter if they escaped, because the usefulness is gone, as far as the communists are concerned. And they began to tell me what it was like in Eastern Germany. And there was quite a lot of interest in the uh, churches in Germany at that time about the sufferings of the believers on the other side in what they call the Ostzone, the East Zone. And then when I came back to this country, it wasn't long before people started to come out of Eastern Europe. Richard Wurmkund, for example, Haraland Popov from Bulgaria, who was in prison and tortured for his faith, and also his brother, Ladin Popov. And they wrote books, books. And I heard Harold and Popov speak at a conference. And you see the suffering in his face. And uh, Richard Wurmkrant made a film as well as writing his books. Brother Andrew Kors wrote God's Smuggler. And there was a flood of literature about Eastern Europe. And a, and a number of people came out. God burdened my heart for the church in Eastern Europe back in the late 60s and early 70s, and I'm sure that others of people say the same. That was when things really began to take off. Well, when we got to 1973, I felt for me that that was far too vast a field, far too vast a field to shoulder the burden in prayer and in serious interest and involvement. And I prayed that God would show me how to narrow it down. And in fact, it all hinged around what could seem in not a very directly spiritual thing, but I had a job at the time, part-time, as a school teacher. I had recently gone into the strict Baptist ministry down in Kent, and I was circulating, waiting for a pastorate, and eventually I, I took the church in Hadlow. But uh, I was working part-time and going around the churches in my evenings and Sundays. Scripture, and we didn't set any prep for scripture, so I got the normal allotment of free periods and nothing to mark. I had all that time regularly when I was there at school with nothing to do, and I thought I think it would be good to learn a language. And so I began to pray that God would tell me what language, what language he would learn, and that would really be how it would go with it. And I began to feel in my heart, having known some of the things I've told you now about Albania, I began to think in my mind that it could well be Albania and to feel in my heart that God was saying. Now I spoke at the Straight Baptist Church in Borough Green about Albania just a little talk like I'm giving you tonight. And that's all. I didn't say anything personal as far as I remember. This was back in 73. But one of the deacons came to me a few days later at another prayer meeting. And he said, you know, David, I think God would have you learn Albanian and become really involved, involved in an Albanian ministry. And that was exactly what was in my heart. So there were outside confirmations, there were other people, there was the situation, and it just became apparent to me that God was calling me into an Albanian work. So in 1973, I, I got Stuart Mann's book, A Short Albanian Grammar, and I, I set aside the other Eastern European countries and just concentrated on Albania, which is what I've done ever since.